Hi guys, so I'm going to show you today three recipes of babushka's remedies, things that you should do at home um, if, you know, you're not feeling so well. I'm not claiming that these will heal you, but this is what we used to do when we were little kids. And our grandma, babushka, always made this for us and also our mom when we were little. So I just want to pass on the Latvian tradition and uh, show you some of the natural home remedies that you can do at home, uh, especially now to boost your immune system and just to kind of feel a little bit better. We're gonna start uh, first with my favorite recipe, which is tea. And this is a tea made with ginger, lemon, and a natural honey. So honey that's actually um, is very, very natural and bought from like organic shops. In Latvia, we actually um, have a whole stall of honey of different flavors and, and things. And I will show you different types of honey that I have. Yeah, just going to show you what we used to have. And I actually still have it because I take it from Latvia all the way here. My granddad always gives me a lot of honey. Uh, bless him. <laughs> so I'm going to show you now this first recipe. And lemon ginger honey tea is so good for you, for your immune system for everything strengthening getting that boost and i actually drink this a lot during the winter time and it's amazing so it's super easy to make let's get started okay so this is the i don't remember the names of these but i just want you this show you i just want to show you how this looks it's very thick and the smell is very strong like it smells amazing because i love honey but if you don't like honey obviously that will be a struggle and then we have this type of honey, which is light in color. So different types of honey depends on different, I guess, flowers that the bees, you know, collect. <laughs> and then this is dark type of honey. You see in a smaller jar. I haven't opened this one yet, but I'm going to open this one. Oh, they're really strong. Oh, and this one smells a, lit, a bit lighter and more flowery. They're just amazing. I'm just going to show you the consistency as well. So when I kind of go inside, we had this one open for a couple of months, maybe. And you can see the longer you have the real honey actually starts to sugar crystallize. So the real honey will crystallize the fake honey, which is sold actually in a lot of supermarkets now, is not going to crystallize because it's made with corn syrup or other types of sugar and just with like flavoring of honey or like a tiny, tiny bit of honey. So always check your jar, try and get like organic honey, honey if you can. Look at that. I can just eat this. Mm. I'm just going to try it out. It's just like really chewy and heavy and soft and very sweet. And it's just like melting your mouth. In fact, my granddad eats this as a, as a dessert after a meal. So, you know, back in the day when we didn't have any candy or anything like that, honey used to be your sweetie. So we're going to start making this tea. I'm going to eat the spoon. Um, so for the tea, we're going to need lemon and ginger. You're only going to need half a lemon and a tiny knob of ginger, just like that. Okay. I'm going to wash my ginger uh, and I'm going to slice it up into small pieces. Okay. So I'm going to slice my ginger. I'm going to take off the skin, peel it off. So you can use a peeler or you can use just use a knife and take the, the skin off like this. Okay. Once you've chopped all your bits off gonna get rid of that and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna thinly slice my ginger it's nice slices like that so you can see it's like nice small pieces here and then I've got my little teapot over here so I'm gonna put all my ginger in there so you can use a teapot you can use a larger pot anything will do um, and ginger takes some time to, to like stew and brew so then we're gonna add the lemon so you can slice your lemon, half a lemon into little slices, just like that. You can also squeeze the lemon juice if you wanted to, but I don't usually squeeze it. It's too like sour for me. So add all your lemon, all right? Just like that, look at this. So it's stuffed with lemon and ginger. And so now lastly, we're gonna add the honey, a big kind of spoon. Go around edges, so like this much. And we're just gonna put the honey in there. You can obviously adjust how sweet you like it. So the honey's in there. And um, now we're just gonna add hot water. Starting hot water slowly, the honey will melt. 
and you can see even the color already is changing that's the lemon juice and the ginger already so you want to fill it up all the way to the top and we're going to leave it to brew for about 15 minutes it's best even to leave it for half an hour because that's when the mixture will be the best that's how easy it is to make lemon honey ginger tea which is full of antioxidants full of amazing vitamins and benefits to you and you can drink this all day literally uh, once the mixture is super strong you can keep re-adding water maybe twice and yeah it's really good for you so drink like warm mixture so i'm gonna leave it for you know a little bit to uh, like stew and i'm gonna show you my second recipe now which is <laughs> really really funny um i remember like you know this was like a trick to make kids eat garlic so we're gonna be making butterbrodiki с колбаской чесноком и огурчиком that sounded very long if you don't speak russian uh, so it's basically going to be rye bread with butter, with um, bologna or sausage or whatever. You can also use chicken, turkey or any type of meat that you have at home. Uh, we're going to place garlic under each uh, sausage and then you top it up with cucumber and you eat it like a mini sandwich, which is like an open sandwich. And we used to have it a lot, especially you, try, you basically needed to eat a lot of garlic, uh, raw garlic. So we're not cooking this and raw garlic is really good for you. Um, it's really good for your immune system. Uh, it's got lots of other benefits. And uh, I'm going to show you how to make this famous babushka sandwich. So over here, I've got some natural rye bread. This is black bread. If you've never tried black bread, look in organic stores. or If you live in any of the Baltic countries or Russia, you'll be able to find this. Just smelling it. It smells so good. Oh my God. Guys, just look at that. I actually uh, also have a rye bread recipe on my channel, but it's not this dark. So this one is Latvian. Ista Rutsu, uh, Rutsu Rupmeise. So it's got 100% of dark rye um, flour. And it's, it's even saying here it's got a lot of um, vitamin B, vitamin uh, K, uh, calcium, magnum and iron actually inside and it's really really healthy really good for you so we eat dark bread a lot so you can toast this i'm not going to toast this one um you then need to take some butter okay uh so you can use salted butter or un unsalted butter it's completely up to you and you want to have you want to put like quite a generous amount of butter there you know quite good amount so what we're going to do, we're just going to add the butter. And then what you want to do, you just want to spread the butter around the bread. If you like a lot of butter, you can actually add more butter. <laughs> I like a lot of butter on my bread. You don't have to add butter, but I think it just adds that extra flavor. And, you know, really like how my granny used to make it for me. And of course, like I said, you can toast this. I don't have a toaster, but then if you don't have a toaster, you can fry this. So, so far we've got bread and butter over here. And this is what I'll be using, uh, Doktorskaya Kalbasa. This is my childhood treat. So we used to have this a lot as a kid. It's basically like a milk sausage. Um, like it's very, very milky. And what I mean is like just very soft and it, it doesn't have any milk in there. It's just what's it called, like Malochna Kalbasa or Doktorskaya Kalbasa. Uh, I managed to get this in a Russian store actually <laughs> so but you can replace this with any type of meat um, or if you don't eat meat you can actually use vegetarian meat whatever whatever you you have but you need to replace it with some sort of you know protein meat I guess I'm just gonna take off the seal around the sausage just like that and you want to cut quite nice you know big pieces over here let's look at that this should be enough and this is how it looks kalbaska now the main ingredient in this recipe is actually garlic so i've got two cloves of garlic here yes whole two cloves 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 uh, i'm just gonna get rid of the skin on top so it's the way I do it, I actually just, you know, you can crush the garlic a little bit and then chop off the end and it just kind of peels off and falls away. And that way you don't get your hands too dirty and smelly anyway. Okay, there it is. 
So you've got your garlic, it already smells really garlicky. And what you wanna do, you wanna chop the garlic really nice and thin into really thin slices because we're gonna be hiding the garlic under the sausage. We were sort of forced to eat garlic when we were little. And it was almost like a, a fun treat, to be honest. Um, it was <laughs> it was like a game for us when we were kids. Basically, um, every time you had a bite, you were like, oh, did I get the garlic or did I not get the garlic? So <laughs> I don't know why, but it just, it makes me happy. It makes me happy, these memories with my granny and my mom, which are both obviously gone now. But, you know, these kind of memories like warm up my heart because, you know, we used to do this when we were little, so... I, I hope I'll be able to pass this to you guys and to my own children one day. Uh, so this is how thin the garlic should be, okay? I mean, probably it looks a bit thick here. What we're gonna do over here, we're gonna add the garlic basically all over your bread. You can actually have more garlic because this is quite a big piece of bread. Um, it's like a giant sandwich. I'm probably gonna have this for lunch now. It is good to have one clove of garlic per person. So you you would be splitting this between your like you know yourself and maybe a couple of kids um and what my mom used to do so i'm just gonna cut off the edges so just the dark edges and we used to make these like small butterbrodiki <laughs> like mini sandwiches so then you're gonna add the sausage and you want to add a lot of sausage because that's kind of like the best bit here and you hide the um the garlic and last ingredient over here is a cucumber so I'm just gonna cut this one off. So you wanna cut nice chunks of cucumber. Okay, and you wanna put that all over the sandwich. And there you go, guys. Ah, look at that. <laughs> there it is. There it is, beauty. Just look at this beautiful giant sandwich. And you can cut this into smaller pieces as well. But that's how it looks. Yummy. Nice and yummy. And look at how ginger tea is brewing already. So I'm gonna chop this up. So you wanna cut this in four, in four basically, or even more, it's up to you. There you go. So this is how you would put it on a little plate and you would share it with your family. In fact, I'm gonna try one now, but just gonna show you. And your ratio of sausage should be bigger ratio than your bread. And then you can see the garlic is like hidden inside there. Like that. There you go. Cheers. Mm. I didn't get any garlic in this one. <laughs> so this is what I mean. It's like a game. But the flavors are absolutely amazing. Mmm. You've got nice, nice rye bread, you've got buttery sort of bread, then you've got that creamy sausage, you've got the crunch from the cucumber. Let's give it another go. There's definitely gonna be garlic in this one. Mmm. Mmm. It tastes so good. You can't actually even taste the garlic that much because you've got so much other things going on and it's so crunchy. And then there's a hint like a small hint of garlic at the end, which adds a lot of flavor. I'm sorry, I'm talking with my mouth full, but I'm just very excited. This is so good. It literally takes me back to my childhood. It's unbelievable how food can make you travel back in time and remind you of that moment when you were sitting around the kitchen. I remember I was sitting, me, my sister, my mom, and <laughs> she would be making these and, we, and she would be asking like, do you want more? And we'd be like, yeah, we want more. So she just kept making them and we would eat this at night, right? And the reason we ate them at night is so you don't stink like garlic during the day. So I do recommend having the, them at night. But since we're in isolation right now and I'm not meeting anyone or seeing anyone, nobody cares that I smell like garlic clove right now. So yeah, these are amazing. Mm. Okay, that was absolutely delicious. Now I'm gonna show you the last third recipe. Um, Babushka's Remedies, and it is a uh, raspberry hot tea. It's so good. Every time I had a temperature or I was not feeling well, or I was coming down with a cold, Granny would make, uh, and my mom as well, because you know, these are past three generations. Um, the reason why I say both Granny and my mom is because obviously I was raised by my mom 
and you know when my mom was killed my granny kind of took over and looked after us so I kind of just say mom and granny all the time because you know granny kind of raised us when she was gone so anyway <laughs> this uh, raspberry tea is amazing um it's usually so how we used to have homemade raspberry jam at home if you don't have a homemade version you can just use a store-bought jam which is basically the same but a uh, natural um homemade jam is better in a way because it's just raw um, raspberries so you can buy frozen raspberries or fresh raspberries and you cook them with a little bit of sugar on the stove and then you add that into the tea but if you don't have it we're just gonna make it with normal raspberry jam one second so we're gonna add about one or two tablespoons of raspberry jam into a cup of uh, basically like into a normal cup like this okay so you're just gonna add that I'm gonna add probably one and a half. I used to love this tea. So the tales, you know, the, the old day tales say that, you know, it reduces your temperature, which it actually does. So if you've got high temperature and you have a hot raspberry tea just before you go to bed, you're gonna be sweating like crazy. So uh, they used to do is put us in bed with like these really strong, big wool, like wool socks, like shirstinli and aski and um cover us in pajamas and then the duvet and then you drank this tea and oh my god you were sweating like crazy all night it's actually pretty disgusting uh and then in the morning like you felt so much better almost like the fever was gone but not every time <laughs> but it did help for sure like it definitely it's like an old tale if you have any like these kind of remedies in your countries let me know <laughs> so we're just gonna add whole water so i've just boiled the kettle and I'm gonna show you how it looks inside. It's really easy recipe. You just mix everything together <laughs> and you mix it until it melts. And I remember like the, the Russian jam, the Latvian jam that we used to have, it had like whole raspberries inside. So you would drink the tea and then you would enjoy the sweet raspberries at the end. Tea is now mixed in. I'm gonna show you a close up. And you're supposed to consume it while it's warm and hot while you're in bed and then cover yourself and sleep and you know sweat a lot but oh and it tastes so good it literally reminds me of my childhood again mm. you can also add like a little slice of lemon there if you wanted to this is how the tea looks so we just mix this through and then you get like these little raspberry bits in there so yummy so delicious and now i'm gonna show you our lemon ginger tea the first recipe let's just see look at that and I'm gonna pour that in the water is always quite clear so you can always add half of this mixture and then you add more of hot water in here just gonna get the kettle let's get the kettle <laughs> and add that in perfect so I would recommend drinking this instead of your tea uh, every day right now. How funny is this mug? Oh God, I'm so bloody blonde sometimes. This was when I used to be blonde. <laughs> so you have the lemon ginger honey tea or remedy one. You've got the raspberry tea lemon remedy two and then remedy three, which is these garlic rye bread sausage mini sandwiches. This is so good. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video with Babushka's Remedies. Um, if you're going to try any of them, let me know. Uh, they are not to cure any sort of viruses or anything like that. These are just, um, you know, I'm just sharing my heritage. I'm sharing with you my memories. And uh, if you've ever, you know, experienced something similar, then let me know in comments below. Or maybe in your country you have something different, which is even cooler. <laughs> so um Really excited to see your homemade remedies. Let me know and stay safe, everyone. Be careful and do take care of your immune system. Don't stress and enjoy food and drinks. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and share this video if you thought it was helpful and funny. And I'll see you in my next video.